Well, here I am at Old Trafford in their magnificent museum in the best looking jewellery box in the world in their Theatre of Dreams, which is appropriate because I'm from the Theatre of My Dreams because I'm currently playing Donna Sheridan in Mamma Mia. And my name is Maz Murray and I am a lifelong Manchester United fan. So it's beyond exciting for me to be here and especially to be beside this baby. So I'm on my way to Lee Training Ground now to go and meet Casey and the girls. Um, and Casey is a real hero of mine because she's the first manager of the Manchester United women's team. Let's go and see them. Nice and easy to start. Good, jog back from that line. How are you oh doing? Hey, so Casey, nice to lovely meet you. to meet you. You okay? Yeah, good. Thanks thank for you. coming. I really Yo, appreciate it. You're joking. Thanks for having me. We're going to train. Feel free to join in at the end. <laughs> I mean, okay. I'm just so not sporting. Like, I'm your idea of hell. <laughs> I said, we're from two very different worlds, aren't we? <laughs> all you got to do, you've got to step up. What do you mean, all you've got to do? Just kick it as hard as you can with your toe. <laughs> Go on, Maz. Oh, yeah! OK, Maz is with us for lunch and obviously the workshop afterwards, OK? Nothing to be afraid of, it's a bit of fun. Okay, all right, we're all out of our comfort zone, me especially. Okay. Hello, everybody. I watched uh, a lot of you training this morning. I was absolutely <laughs> terrified because <laughs> I, anyway, I thought you were going to get me to do something, and I'm the most unsporty person, but in total awe of all of you. You're just superb athletes. Wanted to introduce myself. My name is Maz. Um, I'm currently in Mamma Mia in London, playing Donna, who's the Meryl Streep one, if you're familiar with the film. I've never actually got a job because I was the best or really good. Um, it was sort of working really, really hard. And I don't really know how it works with football as such, but I would have thought some people are born with absolute talent and skill. <coughs> and it's the same for us. You, you, some people are just born singers and it's in them. And other people copy and work it out and think, no, that's what I need to do. I need to do that. I need to listen to Whitney Houston. I need to listen to that. I'll copy that and I'll do that. And they form a whole career that sometimes can actually take over the person that was built and born with the talent. Because the person that's born with the talent didn't push. The career is actually quite, it's quite a good parallel <coughs> between a dancer and an athlete. You had to do all those things that no one else can be bothered to do, and you were driven to do it. And you had to just keep going. And at some point, you're going to go, oh, I can't do it. But, you know, you won't win the cup if you do that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I'm just delighted to meet you all. And if you want to ask me anything, you can ask me anything you want. When you cast for the show, how long do you take to prep to then go live on stage? If you're lucky, five weeks. Three days I had with Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> in Mamma Mia, when they audition you for the show, you have to sing this certain part of Dancing Queen. Okay, so this is what they make you do. <clears throat> you can dance, you can jive, having the time of your life. Ooh, see that girl, watch that scene, dig in the Dancing Queen. <laughs> So Casey, tell me when you first thought this is what I want as a career. If I'm honest, when I was a little girl, I never thought of it as a career because it wasn't possible. There was one team, I lived in Essex and my brother played in that team, but I was never allowed because girls weren't allowed to play football. Yeah. Or encouraged not to play back then and it wasn't until I moved to South London and then my mum found me a team. I played in a boys team. I wasn't the only girl in that team, I was the only girl in the entire league. Um, and that came with its challenges in terms of having to be ready when I turned up, not getting changed afterwards, going home muddy because there was no changing course. facilities. Oh, of course, yeah. But fortunately for me, a, a girls' little league popped up and a guy came to, to watch the, the games and he was the Chelsea ladies' manager at the time. And he said, we'd like you to come play for us. But y you think then, go Chelsea, brilliant. Actually, we had to pay to play even then. He was a volunteer um, and he was the same manager that encouraged me to go to an England trial. How amazing. And I was 15 and I failed. I was told I wasn't good enough. Me being me, I'm very stubborn. So I went back to a second trial, tried my hardest and then I'll have no regrets. And yeah. I got in, so I got in the England under 16s and then 
Um, Arsenal approached me to go and play for them. Again, didn't get paid. I worked in the laundry, washing the men's kit wow. as my job. So what I did at 17 is I put myself through my coaching badges because I knew football was what I loved. At what point did you make that transition to go from being a player to a leader? Very young, actually. I actually got my first captain's role at Charlton when I was 20 years old. I thought at first, all you did was shout at everyone and I learned quickly that was probably not the best way to lead. And I've been captain of every single team that I've been at, including England, since then. With regard to what advice you would give to women that wouldn't want to go into leadership, and what have you found the most challenging being a leader yourself of the team? I think in terms of challenge, you're overseeing 30 people. They all come from different backgrounds, they all react differently, and it's actually the biggest part of my leadership is getting to know them as people. What lights their fire? What don't they like? What do they need? Do they need an arm around the shoulder? Do they need to kick up the backside? And connecting with them enough to have real honest and open conversations so that when I have to have a difficult conversation, it's easy. And I think the advice that I would, would give anybody going into leadership is learn as much as you can about what leadership is and actually just be authentic within it as well. Because if you start to be anybody but you, people will find you out. Yeah, so. you're, you're absolutely right though. We both come from um, industries where our common ground is our passion and is mm. our love. But yet everybody in that comes from completely different scenarios, yeah. financial upbringings, um, education, um, everything is so varied. Yeah. You're working with people that have come from villages that have, you know, very, very poor families, mm. very, very rich families. And it doesn't actually matter because you both have this love and this mutual respect for each other and you're right you you need to find everybody's achilles heel everyone's mm. button and know when to push it and when to step back and how to bring out the best in somebody and i always go i think we're privileged like well, how many people get to do what they love and get paid for it yeah. and be able to put on a show and entertain and you know we get to meet a lot of our fans and they genuinely say i've had a really difficult time and following the women's team has yeah. managed to get me through that yeah you know, amazing so, isn't it yeah it's, amazing it's a real privilege. Yeah. Actually, I'm really lucky. My, my players take their role as a role model really seriously and yeah. they want to give back and they want to inspire. And it's not just about inspiring little girls, it's about inspiring little boys. Because that little boy is going to grow up as a brother, as a father, That's right. as a teacher, and hopefully will grow up in a world where he sees women as completely equal. Yeah. How wonderful. I commend you. That's brilliant. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So I'm here in London to meet Maz and she's going to show me around her theatre of dreams. I was cheated by you and I think you know where. So I Are you, you okay? Thanks for having me. Nice to see you again, you okay? Yeah, yeah good, thank you. Look at me now. So uh, this is Casey Stoney, I wanted to introduce her to other three existing reigning Manchester United fans that we have. I know that Garrett's, um, you've got a connection through your dad. Yeah, when I was younger, my dad used to drive the players home after the match and um, came home one time and was said that he'd actually gone to Vidic's house and played football with his son. And it's just crazy when he came home with stories like that. I'd be like, why can't you take me along with you? <laughs> like, just things like that, but no, it's amazing, honestly. So lifelong supporter. Yeah, all my life. Sophie. <coughs> yep, so similar actually, my dad's born and bred Manchester, so yeah, when I got this job, I phoned my dad and said, Dad, I've got my West End debut, and the first thing he said was, oh my God, that's like playing at Old Trafford. <laughs> and that was like, you know, that's, yeah, so it's, yeah, always. How do you keep up to date with the scores? When a game's on TV, I don't miss it. I mean, I'm on stage a little bit less than the Masford, definite. So I get a big chunk of the game, I come back up after 10 minutes, and it's 1-0 to United. I hear you bring the scores on stage, is that, is that right? I do. He does, but he's really considerate if it's bad news. Sometimes he doesn't say anything, he just squeezes my arm. <laughs> he doesn't even tell me the final score because he doesn't want to ruin my show. So he'll just go, and then I know. I feel like I'm gonna have to sing in a minute. So I brought you backstage and I thought I'd show you my football boots. I don't think you'd score a penalty in them, would you? Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> oh, this is heavy. Yeah, they're really heavy. It's all the bling, isn't it? It's all the bling, yeah. What inspired you to get into theatre and, and what's your journey been? When I was about nine and a half, my sister said to my mum, I want to go to theatre school. 
And I said, oh, I want to go to theatre school then because I didn't want to be without her. So we, we auditioned for the, the nearest theatre school and we got a place and we both went there. What is the, the, the first musical you took part in then? The first musical um, I took part in, I worked for Bill Kenwright. Oh, OK. Who is Everton, yeah. we won't discuss. And he hired me to play Patsy Cline in the Roy Orbison story and I had to go up to his office and sing crazy for him. And he went, great, just start, Monday. And, uh, and that was it. And, uh, and I did Patsy Klein for him and it was my, my first professional job. And I did it for about six months. It was great. And then whilst you're in a show and you know it's coming to an end, that contract, you audition for another show. And right. hopefully you can just flip into a, a new contract. And luckily for me, it happened that way throughout my whole career. So unbelievably lucky. Um, Don't you make your own luck though? You do, and I think you have to, you have to know where you fit in. Mm. And I think I accepted quite early on, I was never going to be Cinderella. I was going to be the ugly sister, or when I was a bit older, the stepmother, or the funny fairy godmother. So I think when you accept that, and you know your path, it's sometimes an easier journey. And you can see I only spent half an hour with with three guys earlier, but you can tell they, look, they massively look up to you. Oh, I like to think so. I mean, mm. I am always aware that there are a lot of women, especially, that are in terrible situations. You know, mm. um, what we do for three hours in an evening is not difficult, it's not hard, it's not awful, it's not walking up 17 flights of stairs mm. in a flat with two children and shopping and having to live that life every day, mm. which is really, really difficult. Ours is not difficult. It's not hard. You know, it's so female-led, this show. It was the first time I'd seen a show that was actually about women and about uh, mothers and about friendships and about a woman coping on her own. It's a real privilege to play that sort of role. It really is, because you don't need a man to do it. And the most powerful thing in the world is women empowering women and yeah, lifting I mean, women up. Yeah, Judy Kramer, who is my boss and, mm. and the, the queen of Mamma Mia, she had this idea to do this show 20 years ago on her own. She took it, she got it back, she got it produced. She did the entire thing and the movie and she did it on her own. She's fabulous. She's a real inspiration, Judy. Obviously, I noticed there's a, a shirt in the background. There is. <laughs> And obviously there's a That's picture of, of you of your children at Old Trafford uh, yes. as well. So what's the connection with Man United and how long have you been a fan for? Well, I had no choice. My mother is born and raised Lancashire. She went to the football when she was little. It was always Manchester United. It's never been anybody else. So when I got pregnant, my mum just shot me a look of if you don't raise them, Man United, we're going to fall out. So I had no choice. So that's, that's my history with Man United. It's just always been there.